go over to here and we'll go back home. And you can go to connect. It's a simple way to get here. And you see this link right here it goes to connect.com. Open that up. And look at all of these cool resources we have here. There's all kinds of training classes and everything. If you haven't been to Connect, please go to kwconnect.com and explore. You'd be surprised the information that's out there. Okay, that's my plug for KW Connect. So if you go to resources <laughs> and you go to marketing, logos and branding, scroll on down here to market center logos. Atlanta Partners, it's a different market center number, but we're all one family. So the logo will look exactly the same, download it. And that's where you get your logo from, okay? So your logo will say Atlanta Partners and not just Keller Williams. Again, that's KW Connect. Once you're in KW Connect, you go to resources, scroll down to marketing. Once you're in marketing, you can go to logos and branding. And by the way, look at all of these different other links in marketing. Explore, explore. Scroll down to the bottom after you, when you get to the Market Center Logos section, right in here, you start typing Atlanta and it'll pull up Atlanta Partners. You download the logo to your desktop and you may use it. Okay, so your applications. From your home screen, there's a little marketplace icon up here. If you hover over most of these icons, they will tell you exactly what they are and where they lead to. You click on your marketplace. And you can search for Twilio. And it'll come up. You can follow the on-screen instructions to install it and then connect it. And then you come back to your settings. Once that's complete in the marketplace, you will come down here and you will see a Twilio connection and it will say not connected yet, choose a number. You click on it. Again, it's very self-explanatory. You read the on-screen instructions, you'll choose a number. Once you choose that number, it will be assigned directly to you and it's your number to now send text messages through only. The phone number that you use is for sending text messages only. Therefore, if anybody calls that number, it will just ring, ring, ring to a deadline. You will never know. Unless, once you get connected, if you come back to this area and hit manage, it will tell you that your phone number has not been forwarded yet. So then you can go into manage and have that phone number forwarded to any number that you like. So in the event that you send someone a text message and they try to call you on that number, they will reach you. So I highly recommend, recommend that once you connect your Twilio, that you come back in and forward that number to a number that you can answer or someone will answer, or you'll have some sort of notification that these people called you. All right. Um, um, yes. Being that we have some new agents on here, did we cover what the purpose of Twilio is? Does everybody know what that's for? Yeah. 
Yes, no. Blank stares are, 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 are agreements. So just you know, if you don't speak up, you're agreeing to whatever I'm saying. Oh, I'm gonna to touch on smart plans. They're, they are part of smart plans um, and then we'll touch on that. But you will need Twilio in order to send text messages to people via command. Um, other things that will be in here that you'll need to set up is a DocuSign account. If you come through the marketplace again and go and find DocuSign, Good practice is just keep in mind that if you're going to use it with command, more than likely you want to start in command. So that means if you're going to get a DocuSign account, don't go to DocuSign.com to create it and then come back to command. Come into the marketplace, search DocuSign. and then create your account through the marketplace. That then connects you to command a lot more seamlessly. Um, the same thing with uh, your Gmail, you'll come in here and you'll say connect, manage or connect your account. You wanna connect your uh, Twitter if you have it you'll see the different things that you need to connect that will already be here. If they're here, go ahead and connect it. Uh, your command email, you'll have to set that up as well. Again, it'll be a start button. And if you just don't try to rush through it, take your time and read exactly what the, what the instructions are and you'll fly through it in no time. All right. Oh, let me let me say this. When you go into Facebook to connect your Facebook account, in order to have a Facebook business page, which you need in order to run Facebook ads, you must have a personal Facebook account. One, the business account cannot ex exist without a personal account. They have some trouble with business accounts and not being able to track people down. So they don't let it exist unless they know they can track it to somebody personal. So they don't allow it. So that being said, when you go to connect your Facebook, they're asking for your personal account. So connect it using your personal account and then you'll see your business account in the drop down as an option. But don't try to set log in with your business account because it won't work. And you'll think you're having a problem. And in fact, they're looking for your personal account. Uh, same thing with Twitter. Sign up with your personal account. Um, connecting your Google Calendar, of course, will sync anything that's going on in command with your calendar so that you'll, you're in tune with what's going on in command in your daily life. Same thing with Gmail. This will sync interactions between command and um, your KW email or what, whichever email that you use to connect to this Gmail account. I suggest you use your KW email, but you can use whatever business Gmail that you have connected. You do have that ability. However, whenever you do anything with KWRI, you sign up for classes, you take some kind of course, they're going to ask for your KW email. So I would get used to using your KW email. And if you want to forward some emails to your other account, I, you can do that. But I would get used to using your KW email because you're going to need that as a default email for a lot of things that you do. Stop real quick. Do you have any questions? I can't see the question. The, question, the chat box. Uh, we had a few folks respond regarding Twilio, so I just put in the chat what um, what that application is used for okay. um, regarding sending text messages. Got it. 
Okay, so the first two steps are your marketing profile and connecting your applications, right? So um, your applications is what connects, connects command with the outside world and vice versa. So you wanna come in here and make sure your applications are all connected so that you can have uh, smooth and seamless transactions and um, flowing in and out of the command world in the real world. All right, so let's move on to contacts. Your second icon down underneath your home is contacts. Up the top right hand corner, you hit add a contact. Put your full name, the person's full name. You can add a relationship, whether they're a spouse, father, mother, son, You can, if their if they're, uh, family member is already in your database, you can choose them here from the drop down box. If not, you can add a primary, primary email, primary phone, your lead source. Did it come from someone in your contacts? Was it a lead that was a referral? Or pick it from this list so that you can keep track of where your contacts are coming from. Because good business is, if you can identify something that's working good, you wanna put more energy and effort into that. So the way you find that out is by tracking your, tracking your, uh, your efforts. And this is one way to track where your leads are coming from. Make sure you use a lead source type on all your contacts when you enter them in. So if it's from your sphere, you can put sphere there. You can, <clears throat> excuse me, you can add them to your sales pipeline, which will then uh, open up a uh, page to allow you to start an opportunity, which is the next thing we're gonna talk about. You can choose tags here and tag all your people with whatever tags that you create or system tags. Tags are a way to group your contacts quickly. So instead of having to go through all your contacts, you wanna just look at your buyers or send something to your buyers. You can search by tag and type in buyer tag and it'll only pull up the people who are tagged with buyer. So that's what those tags are there. Everything in uh, command for the most part is quite literal. Okay. Rob, if I can just say on tags too, this is a good place. You can add multiple tags to people. So if you wanna um, say, hey, I know these people from my kid's soccer team, or I know these people from some other you know, realm in, in the world, that gives you some idea of how you can communicate with them in, in relevant topics too. Exactly, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Makes the conversation easier. Um, additional contact information is where you would go down here and put an address. Um, if they have a mailing address versus their primary address, you can put multiple addresses in here. You can add their Facebook profile if you need to. Your birthday, home anniversary, where they work, all information that you can need to uh, have good personal conversations with people and send them relevant information when you need to, all here in this contact card. So it doesn't, it makes it so you don't have to think about what you need to ask them and what information you need. Just go through your contact card and if it's a blank space, try to get it. And that's how as, you, as for the new agents too, as you're building out your database, if you're going through your phone and maybe all you have in there is their phone number, it's a great touch to them. Be like, hey, I want to send you some information relevant to where you live. Let me get your address. 
you're, you're coming from wanting to give them something of value, but you need some information to be able to do that. So it's great touch on them um, as you're building that database out. And hey, I, I, I'd like to recognize people on their birthdays. So I don't need your year, just your month and a day so I can drop you something around your birthday and you know, just to say hi, that would be great if you, something like that. Um, let's go to opportunities. So again, once you have spoken to somebody and they've given you an idea or an inclination that, okay, hey, they might have some business for you. Either they have given you a name or they themselves are gonna conduct some business with you between now and the near future or the extended future even. If you check, when you if you're um, in the contact and you check add to sales pipeline, it will bring you to this page. Outside of that, you can come directly here and create an opportunity. Now, this opportunity, again, is going to track or help you track what stage that person is in, that actual opportunity, literal opportunity. So you choose your opportunity type, whether it's a listing, a buyer, um, it's a landlord you're working with, or a tenant. It's going to be your name, your client's name, you search from the client in your database, or if you want to add a co-buyer and they're in there, you put that here. You name your opportunity something unique so that you can find it in the list when you need to. I'm you just can. gonna throw in their best practice on that. If it's a buyer, you're gonna to wanna to use the name of the, the client because you don't know the property yet. If it's a listing, you want to use the property address. Absolutely, thank you, Dawn. Uh, you wanna put in your estimated close date if you know one the time frame that they want to conduct this business in? Is it one month, three months, 12 months from now, longer than that? What their budget is, if you know they're already pre-approved or you have an idea already, what your commission rate is, percent, unless you've negotiated something higher or lower. Um, and here's the beauty of this opportunity. You put them in phases. So is this person, am I cultivating them right now? Did I set an appointment? Am I at the appointment phase? Or are we past that and we're actually actively looking? And each one of these drop downs has a secondary stage. So in this cultivate phase, we have the watch stage, the nurture stage, and the hot stage. I think those are pretty self-explanatory as to if you're cultivating, you know, you know are they two years off from buying or a year off from buying, then we're just gonna watch them. Are they, a year, are they a year or less, then we're gonna nurture them. If they're six months or less, then they're hot. So you wanna keep on them, right? Appointment phase has scheduling, scheduled the appointment already, or the appointment was kept. Active, we have searching, showing, negotiations, or legacy. And again, each one of those phases are uh, self-explanatory and the stages are as well. And once you create your opportunity, this is where you keep track of all the information surrounding this transaction. So in your details tab, you can come in here and fill out all of this information by editing using the pencil. Anytime you see a pencil, more than likely that's an action. So if you click on it, it's gonna help you edit something or fill something in, one or the other. So you can come here and fill out the information on these tabs. You can fill out the property here in this box, your buyer profile, 
this will tell you that I, this particular client, has already registered on your com com uh, consumer platform, meaning they either registered on your website or your app. Your documents. This is where you communicate with the market center and let them know that you do indeed have some business brewing and here are the documents associated with that. You have 24 hours, correct? From the time you go binding, is it 24 hours, Dawn? Maximum. Maximum. You want to get it in immediately, as soon as possible. After you go binding, you want to come in here and go under contract. And then each one of these lines will tell you this is conditional, this one is optional, this one is required. Purchase and sale agreement is actually required. And you come over here to add it. And you go down the list until everything is that's required or optional or that's part of that deal is in this system. You can then submit to Market Center and that notifies them that I do have a deal and this is what it is and these are the terms and these are the documents associated with it. Until you do that, they do not know. They need to know because they are the broker of record and you just actually put them in a contract with somebody. So I think they would like to know. <laughs> so no, but seriously, let them know in, as soon as possible by submitting your documents here. Again, you go to documents tab in that opportunity. You come to the under contract section and that will then allow you to upload the documents. Once these documents have been uploaded, you will get communication if everything has been accepted or if it's been rejected. Over here, it'll be a little red box with an envelope, with an uh, inbox, and the um, compliance team will tell you exactly why it's rejected or if it's approved, you won't get any message. It'll just say approved. If it's rejected, they'll tell you why and exactly what's needed. And you can communicate with them through this uh, portal, this the method that you saw them. This it's a messaging system. So just type at whoever it is, William Whipple, at William Whipple, whoever sent you the message, and then reply to the message. Just like any other messaging system. Um, once this gets approved, you can come over to your offers and commissions tab. You're going to add a new offer. And what that is, is you're giving the details of that contract. So you're going to fill out this information, all the asterisk boxes. Put in the parties. Rob, if I can just make clear for folks, this is, um, we're talking about 24 hours once you have an accepted contract. This isn't like every offer that you write, you don't need to go in there and do that for this. Correct, binding. Put in your terms of the contract. If you want, you can add your thoughts about the deal, pros, cons, and summary, and you hit save. Now, this will be here. Once you see this, you can now accept this offer or reject it. Right now, you only have the ability to create this one, but in the very near future, you'll be able to have a um, a URL that you can share when you have multiple offers and they will then fill out this information for you and it will show up here. That's why you have the ability to accept, accept or reject multiples in this screen. You want to then click accept it 
Once you accept it, you'll get your commissions tab, and that's where you that's where the money lives. You fill out your commissions tab. This is a class in and of itself. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're not gonna dive into how to fill out the commissions tab, but that just but know that that's how you get there. Once you create all your documents under under contract within the opportunity, you then go to your offers of commissions tab and add a new offer, fill out the information that's required. Then once you accept the offer, you'll get the ability to then manage your commissions. You fill out this information and submit it and that's how you get your money. This is where the money is, offers of commissions tab. You can put notes, you can do a timeline, see your timeline. It's a beautiful thing. Now, back to this screen. Where'd I put them? There he is. So as you can see, you can just drag and drop from one area to the other. And these tabs all denote those different stages of the opportunity that we were talking about earlier. So this is the cultivate phase, watch, nurture, hot, the appointment stage, scheduling, scheduled, kept, the active stage, searching, showing, negotiations, legacy, the under contract stage, and then the close stage. So you can move these opportunities throughout the stage that they're in so that you know I have go to active and you have these people that are active. On oh, who am I working with right now? Who do I need to touch? You can come to your opportunities, look at your active buyers and see where they are in your pipeline. And this is a great tool to be able to know exactly what's going on in your business at, the, at any time with who you're working with, where they are, what's in your pipeline. So you know that if you have a bunch of people in Cultivate and nobody in Active, then you might want to go through your Cultivates and see if anybody's closer to setting to getting an appointment to start the process to see where they are. So um, yeah, that's opportunities in a nutshell. Anybody have any questions about opportunities? Dawn, you have any comments? Uh, just me yammering on in the chat. Okay. <laughs> and we're going to wrap it up with smart plans. Smart plans. My favorite. I love smart plans. Um, if you go over here to the third one down, you'll see, hover, again, if you hover over any of these icons, they will tell you exactly what they are and where they lead to. You click on smart plans. And smart plans are your assistant, essentially. It's a digital assistant. So let's create a smart plan. This is going to be a test smart plan. Oh, let's do test one. Apparently, I already have a test smart plan. And if I can throw a best practice in there that I've found personally, I like to date my smart plans because I'll have multiple that are very similar. Um, and that way I know which one went out at what timeline. Most definitely. I pick a naming convention that works for your brain. <laughs> I'm, I am the exact same way. I have a specific naming convention that if anybody else tried to read it, they would be confused. <laughs> um, okay. Decode. Uh -huh. It's in code. It's in code. <laughs> um, okay, so you see this is the name. 
And along the right side, you have your actions. So you can have a task, make a call, um, send an email, send a text message, set a delay, add to another smart plan or restart that same smart plan. So let's go through each step. So this is the tree of activity. These are the actions that you want this smart plan to take. So first thing I want this smart plan to do is create a task. So if I click it, it adds a task to the left. This is a task for you, the agent to do. So it's just a reminder to tell you to do something on a specific day at a specific time. So as you see, you can, it's due whenever, whether this is a touch or a non-touch, this is just something that you need to do in relation, or is this involving the actual client? Name the task, set the task description, what it is you actually wanna do. If there's a link involved, you can put it here. Okay, on this day, I need to go look at the prices of the homes in that neighborhood and then put the link to the neighborhood here. You can do that. But essentially, that's what this is. It's, a it's creating a task or a reminder for you, the agent, to do something in regard to this particular person. Make a call. Again, you click on it, it adds it to the left. This is self-explanatory. It's reminding you to make a call on this specific day to this specific person at this specific time or on just that day. Again, if it's, that, if it's a link involved, you can add the link at the bottom. Now, as you see, you have options here on each one of these actions. The bottom of the box, these are for the box above it. These actions at the bottom off of the box above them. So you can move that down, you can move it back up, you can delete it, you can save at that point, save what you did to it, okay? Now, send an email. Now, because your command email is set up and your Gmail is connected, this, these emails are sent via command email, but when they reply, they will be replying to your KW email or whatever email you have set up in your marketing profile, because this is where this is pulling from. You're gonna put your email subject and then you have the ability to create an email just as you would in your Gmail account. Whatever capabilities you have over there, you will have here. Now, if you would like to create an HTML type email that has all the pictures and the colors and it looks all pretty, then you would go over to your designs tab. Let's open that real quick so I can show you. You go to email and you have modern templates that you can use, classic different email templates that you can use and customize, or you can create your own by creating a new template. We're not going to get into that, but you can create an email. Let's see. Uh, that looks like this. Versus your standard text only email. This is where you would come to create an email that you that looks similar to this. And then once you, you've saved and created that, then you have the ability to now come here to designs and you can go select designs and it will pull you to those email templates and you can choose one of these to put in its place.
So you have the ability again to type a simple email that you just create here or pull one from designs. Now here you also have what's called merge fields. Now merge fields are great because they make these smart plans personal. So you can send this smart, this one smart plan and put 40 people in it and or 40 people will get a personal email from you. You can do that by saying hello. And instead of just leaving it blank, come over here to your merge field and say contact first name. I am happy to announce. Okay, so what this does is Whoever's assigned to this, it's going to read that contact card and pull their first name. Same thing with all the rest of these merge fields. Whatever one you choose to put an ad anywhere, it's going to pull that information from that either that contact or from your marketing profile and put it in its place. That's how you have the ability to make these things personal and it's glorious. <laughs> um, send a text message. Text message also has merge fields. If you see this little F with these little um, whatever they're called <laughs> out here in the drop down box, that's a merge field that can be used in that in that location. And you see it here. Merge field. And again, hover, it'll tell you what it is, merge field. Hello, contact first name. I know you heard me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, so now we got the next one is set a delay. Now, this is here so you don't feel like they don't feel like they're being spammed. So after this task, I want to send an email. I don't want to immediately send an e a text message too because I just sent them an email. So I'm going to take this delay and put a delay in there. Let's move it up one. So between this email and this text message, I'm going to set a delay. You can set as little as one day or a maximum of 30 days. So I'm going to leave it for one day and so on day one, as soon as I run this smart plan, it's going to send me a task and say, hey, do this or whatever the day is that it's supposed to remind me. The next step is on the same day that I started, it's going to send an email. It's going to skip a day and then send a text message. Hey, Rob, if I can on the text messages, just so nobody's caught off guard, in order to protect you from um, uh, uh, what's what's the acronym? I can't even think of it. It's from from spamming people, basically, it does send a message with your text message the very first time you send it, saying if you want to opt out of this, you can. So just know that it's going to send that to your folks um, initially with the first text message. Yes. Um, also, a thing to note: you cannot send two emails on the same day from the same smart plan. So if you're going to have two emails in your smart plan, they must be separated by a delay. You can, however, send multiple smart plans to that person that will then send those emails out. But in one smart plan, you cannot have two emails back to back. The system will not allow it because it's considered spam. So again, in the same smart plan, separated by a delay. If you need for some reason to send multiple emails on that one day from smart plans, then create multiple smart plans to do that. Um, at the end of your smart plan, you sometimes you might want to, like I'm gonna give you um, the ability to download some smart plans here in a minute, but um, say this is an intro smart plan. Hey, I'm getting ready to start you on this monthly neighborhood nurture. I just wanted to let you know that this is going to happen. You can create a smart plan that says that, sends them an email, and then go add to smart plan. Select a smart plan because I'm going to put them on the monthly. Wow. 
whatever. We're going to put them in a, a, a smart plan. So what this is saying is at the, after this delay, the very next step, it's going to add them to a different smart plan. This smart plan is running into another smart plan and will start that smart plan. Or sometimes it might be a, a smart plan that needs to be recurring. It needs to run more than once with that same person. So you can then come in here and put restart smart plan. And it, how many times do you want to repeat it? You want to repeat it once, twice, or three times. Say you want to repeat it twice. You can then come to your SMS text messages and make them dynamic. So as you see, it gave you two text messages. So now the first time this, this smart plan runs, it's gonna run text message number two. The second time it comes around, it's gonna run text message number two, number one and then number two, respectively. If you set this for three, it'll give you three options and each time it will send the next text message. So you don't have to remember to do that and they don't get the same text message. All right, so that is smart plans in a nutshell. You can-, can I add one more note, Rob? Okay. Just, well, I know I keep interrupting you, I'm sorry. That's a, no, go ahead. I want to make sure folks realize these smart plans continue running until they time out or you stop them. So if you have content running that may come across, if something changes in the world, let's, let's go with last year. If you sent out, had a smart plan to say, were you traveling for 4th of July that was going to everybody in 2020, you appeared tone deaf. So make sure that you're, you're staying on top of, you know, either stopping them or changing content if you, you, you don't, don't want that content to go out anymore because it'll just continue to send. Yep. Um, also, you have, uh, once you save it, let's go to a smart plan that's done. Hmm. Once you save the, the, the smart plan, this will then pop up. You'll be able to add a trigger event. If it's an existing smart plan, this is already there. If you create a new smart plan from scratch, you have to save it first, and then you will be able to add a trigger event. And what that is, is you can then add a tag here. Now, if for some reason, if for some reason, I need this smart plan to run with, uh, whenever I put an agent in my database, I can then create the contact. And while I'm in there, I can tag, tag it with the agent tag and it will trigger this smart plan to automatically run. I don't have to then come and add him to a smart plan or whatever. If I put this tag on the front of the smart plan as a tag trigger, every time I use this tag, this smart plan will run. And now, as a gift to you guys for showing up and making me feel all warm and fuzzy, <laughs> if you go to your library and type my name, you will have access to some smart plans that I created and shared for you. One is a monthly neighborhood nurture intro and an intro to my bi-weekly neighborhood nurture and my Twilio number. Let me show you this one. This is the best one. Well, all of them are good, but what this does is when you first start out with your new Twilio number, you can send this text message to your people and say, hey, this is an additional business number for me that I may reach out to you with from time to time. Please add this number to my contact in your phone. Following this text, you will get another message asking the best way to communicate with you. Make sure to text me back. 
so that I can cater to your communication needs. That's referring to the text message that Dawn is talking about, because the first time you send a text message to somebody from Twilio, Twilio will automatically send them a message giving them the ability to opt out. And if they don't recognize the number and know it's you, they're going to opt out more times than not because they just think it's some random person just texting them. So if you give them a heads up, this will um, increase the likelihood that they won't opt out. And then it sets a delay and then sends another one that's just, hey, you know, I also wanted to put my app in your hands. Okay. So whenever you go into the smart plans, you can go to the library, type in louder. And just for clarification, that guys, that library is uh, smart plans that other agents across the country have created and shared, as well as ones that KW has created. So if you need some ideas on what to put in a smart plan, just go to that library and start scrolling through what other people are using. Yep. At the very top, the featured are the ones that are cu curated by Keller Williams International. They're already set. Um, you don't have to customize them for the most part. Once you scroll down past that blue and you get into these down here, these are created by other agents. And you're going to have to customize them. They still work and they're great. And it, it saves you from having to try to create a smart plan or come up with something clever to do. If you just go to your library and search, like I'm going to put my name in there so you see what it looks like search by author name, and then that will give you access to download those smart plans. Um, once you click this, if that smart plan happens to have that feature in it that um, add another smart plan in it, it'll tell you here. When you go to add it, you'll have, this is the one that you want to download but it's telling you that within this one, it requires you to have this one. So if you don't already have this smart plan, it's going to give you the option to download it. So you download this and then it will give you the, the option to download the original one. So it lets you know that, hey, there's a smart plan that's required that you don't have. So you will have to download both in order to use this. Um, these are your bi-weekly and monthly neighborhood nurture. Um, let's, open. let's just open it and look at it. that I have people on. What it is, it just sends them an email and says, hey, I'm about to put you on this bi-weekly neighborhood nurture. Don't worry, I'm not going to spam you. This just gives you an idea of what's going on in your neighborhood. And it sends them a link uh, every two weeks. And what that link is that they send real quick before I let you guys go, because we're out of time. If you go down to the bottom and you add an address, it will give you the ability to add a neighborhood. This neighborhood link pulls in everything that's for sale in that particular neighborhood, gives you information about the neighborhood. Our websites pull from Yelp and Google, Google Maps and Nextdoor. So you have, you have the ability to, once you pull up that neighborhood, you're having hyper-local information, you get the Yelp edition, which tells them everything what the neighbors are saying about the neighborhood. And um, Google Maps gives them um, the ability to drill down and actually see what's going on. So that's it. Um, my name is Rob Lauder again. I am your market center tech trainer. That's Dawn. She's great. 
I got, I got two things, Rob, real quick. Yeah. Go to the home screen and command. On the right, you see where it says new designs, where, where, right where your mouse is, yep. So if you guys are looking for content to send out, KW is always putting out new designs that are relevant to what's going on in the world. So um, if you click on those new designs, you'll see one's coming out for Red Day because we've got Red Day coming up in a couple of weeks. So you can let all your clients know that you're participating in Red Day and doing something good for your, your community. Uh, I think there's ones in there about taxes right now because taxes are going to be due here shortly. So use those designs if you're looking for creative things to send out. Um, and then the other thing I was going to say, this is obviously we had an hour today. Um, so Rob went over a lot and thank you so much, Rob, for doing this for us. We have our region doing a full, what is it, four hour command lab stay on? Next Friday. Next Friday. Let me put this in the chat real quick. This is the registration link, guys. Um, this is going to be front to end the entire command system where you're going to, I think, walk through and actually do things for yourself as well. Um, so for right now, it's definitely, guys, get the contacts in there, get them on smart plans. Those are the first two things you can do right now to communicate with your database and let them know that you are not a secret agent, that you are in real estate and ready to help them. Um, but if you want to jump into the, the end to end of that, you can definitely get on that command lab stay. I'm assuming it's, it's a Zoom um, where Good. our region is, is putting that out for all of our agents. Um, that'd be a real in-depth one for everybody. Um, and that was, that was my, my last pitch. Okay. <laughs> well, I hope it was informative and you guys got some information out of it. Um, my Cantaloupe link is out there. Um, if not, just ask somebody for it and they can get it to you. Um, if you need some one-on-one -on -one time, I'm, I'm open. Just go to that link. And if it's available on that link, then choose it. All right. Um, just bear with me if there's a you know, limited availability because I am a practicing agent as well. I would split my time. Um, but I love doing, doing this for you guys. So if, like I said, if you have any type of um, questions, reach out to me. If I can't, I'll get you to somebody who can or I'll get right back to you. Okay. Have a great weekend, guys, and thanks for coming. Thank you, Rob. Thanks.